Alright, well, I, um, I unfortunately didn't get a chance to save that. I was just thinking about saving, too. It's like, ah, oh, well, we got this far. Let's see how the save load functionality works. <sighs> see. Oh. Well, that might be better for me. <laughs> okay, at least now Twitch is working. Hey, hey. Pride side to everything. Hmm. And my camera decided it does not want to wake up right now. So Let's it might see. be something on Nero's side. That's funny. That's weird. Yeah. I'll figure it out later. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, let's get back to where we were. To the extent of which we can. Uh, chat again. Character creator back up. Tell some folder here and character creator. There we go. Launch it up. Let's back up. All right. Me with Unity. All right. Create character. Make a character. So let's just pretend that all the data that we just entered is still there. Okay. Uh, so I'm clicking over to the gear tab. So we've got all sorts of equipment here we've got uh, gauntlet shield different types of clothing um, let's see furniture light sources soap mirror uh, crafting materials or craft craft related materials uh, various different uh, food goods and uh, groceries a couple musical instruments various survival goods here so I guess I have a question and it's, uh, it's huh, such an interesting question um, Because with Revival, we bought our house first, and we had purchases. We were purchasing furniture almost kind of with real money. And I'm just looking and seeing we have what... Uh, what, what are our, our, our two... Um, is it coins? We have sovereigns and what? Uh, sovereigns and then... Uh, and sovereigns bits. and bits. Uh, eight bits to a sovereign. And, okay. Uh, so we have, what, 170 or 178 bits? How many no, we don't have 170. Copies? We have um, 310. 310. It's 10 times your age. The way things sure. are right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the current available gold, 170, right? Nope. I just clicked it up. I had the age not filled in. Remember, okay. we're pretending that the, the attributes are all filled in. Yeah, but it, uh, <laughs> that was just yeah, a mechanical yeah, thing. I forgot to fill in. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, Okie dokie. And they they did a pass through already uh, once to kind of tweak some of the prices because we found that uh, initially uh, prices were probably un either the either the amount of gold to age was wrong or the prices were wrong. Either way, I mean, you could buy 
the 350 sovereigns that uh, Sarah started off with would have been, I could have bought everything on the list pretty much. Uh, so they've huh. beaten them since then. Hmm. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, our purchasing of lamps and furniture seems kind of weird. So, like we should. Well, and that's. What's furniture? Yeah. No, um, that was one that kind of st- is it is it a lamp in that it's a small I mean cuz it's it's a it's a folding it's, it's a, a folding lamp. chair it's not like uh, a giant like you know solid wood chair made out of a big old you know stump of redwood or something you know right. it's, it's a folding it's a chair. chair well and still I don't I don't anticipate traveling with a folding chair strapped to my back but I could see maybe someone who a party that's maybe invest uh, visible in the um, pen and paper channel of the Discord, but it's a. Do I, am I buying just one set of clothes? Do I buy multiple sets of clothes? I mean, really, when I start rationalizing this, I buy one set of clothes. That's it. That's what guy wears that every day in a row, morning and night. I think, I think a, a butcher baker might have two sets: one for the cooking and whatever you're doing there, and then one for when you. You're going yeah. out and sing, or one when you're selling, you might not want to have that covered in blood or whatever. But so I, I think he would have two, but one, yeah. uh, three sounds like a lot for a baker. Well, but that, so that's uh, that's where I, think, I that's where I ran into my question though is 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 it a lot? I mean, I, I, even right. even How for would the we know? well, but hold, I mean, just following along that, I mean, it's you have one outfit that you're working on, I mean, that means you're basically washing an outfit every day, or maybe maybe they're not, but I'm, I'm hoping as a, as a baker that he's at least somewhat conscious of hygiene. Well, if we're talking medieval times, they bathed like maybe twice not. a year. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe and I don't, think they, I don't think they would have... European washed. medieval times, they bathed twice a year. Right. Yeah, I don't think they would have been changing clothes every day and washing yeah. clothes every day. Okay. So only multiple sets of clothes are either a luxury or work environment requirement. Okay, that's that's fair, Snipe. Just one of the things that it kind of paused uh, paused me because I was like, well, uh, he, if you're traveling, you'd want to have a set of clothes for traveling, but if you expect that you have to conduct business or anything else, you definitely want another set of clothes that aren't mud splattered yeah. and bloody and torn. Yeah. And then, yeah. in, like you said, in his case, he's also uh, he's probably got an outfit that he uses specifically for work. And that might actually be a lower quality outfit. That might be one that he doesn't mind getting. Right, and so kind of what I was saying is I would see, I could see three sets of clothes if one of those sets is rough, is is below average, and then two sets of average. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, you know, they're just there to get the job done, and then he's got one for his walking around clothes. So yeah, but I'm saying I could see one below average and two average but three average seems like a lot okay I'm uh, just moving the thing here so they can see us all again um okay so I'll make the adjustment there um so we have a below average clothing I can't really see yeah, we uh, have yeah. four. A cl- four. Clothing four, clothing uh, yeah. average clothing five. Yeah, do do one poor, and that'll be what he is butchering and baking in, or whatever. Okay. Or do two poor if you want to do one for butchering and one for baking, and then an average for selling. Although, note two. Our lovely devs there, but uh, heavy leather aprons, post haste. Blacksmiths would definitely have a leather apron. A cook uh, would yeah. have at least a modest apron. So yeah. Yep. No yeah. pressure. It's not like you don't have other things to get done. You know. So I'll just... there's there's quite a bit lit missing even for explorer mode, like cookware, any kind of right. tableware. Like there's no bowls or cups, which would right. be your most basic thing. Yeah. Right, so I mean they'll they'll get all of that stuff. There's and... lots of coconuts. We can use those for bowls. <laughs> <laughs> can also use those as your uh, your transportation. You know, yep, Monty Python also... style. Actually, that's that was right. that's my favorite in uh, Shroud of the Avatar. If you got in at uh, early enough point, you get the uh, the coconut halves 
And when you've got one in your right hand and your left hand, you, you click them as you go along. <laughs> <laughs> I think it actually makes you go a little faster, too. I can't recall. Um, so let's get back to it here. Um, and yeah, the um, just it's just a minor scaling issue. Since I'm not running at 1920 by 1080, it's um, just cutting off some of the stuff on the left and right a little bit. Yep, that's um, fine. Actually, I'm going to just cheat it and do this. Nope, that totally broke it. Okay. Haha. <laughs> Alright. So, we got some clothing. He doesn't have gauntlets or light shield. That's not quite. I could have sworn there's a chef's knife actually listed as an item. That would make build. sense. Let me look there's all the way knife. down. Kitchen knife. Yeah, sorry. Kitchen knife. Costs a couple sovereigns too. <laughs> Good blades usually do. Yep. In uh, what category? Um, I don't know. And I'm actually, for some reason, my I just thought I got the newest build of the. I don't know that uh, it's under. App, but I can't see gear for some reason. Yeah, I think it's under something. Uh, ah, kitchen knife. Yeah. I would, uh, I would imagine he's got two, maybe three of these. So that way, when he sharpens, he can sharpen them all, and then as the day goes on, the blades wear down, you know. He doesn't yeah, I did to... not see a sharpening stone in there. Or honing steel. Yeah. Right. We'll get there. That sounds like my new show. <laughs> I'm yeah, just I mean, gonna. I had a short list of things that were missing. Like, um, there's a there are a couple of things like candles and candle helms, and the lanterns <laughs> use oil though, and there's no way to buy oil. Right. I'm just gonna go with the next closest thing and just buy a, a chunk of chalk, and we'll just pretend that's actually a sharpening stone. Okie dokie. <laughs> yeah. I'm. Well, I was kind of trying to figure out how much is minutia anyway. But yeah, I mean, I agree. You get to get a point a where you start. The... Yeah, you really get to a point where you're starting just to add things because of every conceivable. Right. Um. Get an extra piece of hide. <laughs> Handcraft your leather apron, not this guy. <laughs> he will trade buns for the things that he needs. Possibly buns filled with some sort of meat. It's kind of an interesting thought, um, and unrelated to necessarily to anything, but handcrafted, when you think about it, right, everything in this world is handcrafted. That has no meaningful value like it does today, where we're like, oh, well, this is a handcrafted piece of art. Maybe well, some things are demon-crafted. Well, that, that's that's fair, <laughs> but but unless the demons are still, are, are have uh, industrial revolution happening where they're at, then chances are it's still handcrafted, right? So it's just, it's just <laughs> an interesting... Magic, magic well, instead of hand. Okay, that's right. that. I have to give you absolutely the, these fiery, fiery hell forges and. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just one of those random things where it's like, ah, oh, you know, it's right now we pay a, a premium for handcraft. Back then, you have no choice. Would he have a uh, a map of Crown's Rock? I can't imagine. Well, let me remember. I can imagine him having one, but I don't. Yeah, I don't need think a map would. of Crown's Rock. I think he would have grown, having grown up, he there, he's well used to the streets. He doesn't need one, but that doesn't mean he wouldn't necessarily, you know, not have one. Um, I don't know why you could have a map of. I don't know if you're doing I like business imagine. negotiations you might need a with map someone. Of part of Crown's Rock. Yeah. Like how to get from where he is down to the 
down to the different. It's, I, don't, I would I, say I don't, I don't necessarily picture oh, that because the guy grew well, up. In well, no, I I think it'd be more of a negotiations thing. Like if someone's trying to hustle him about like the cost of transporting something from one area to another, it's like no, listen, look at the map here. This is the distance. You know, this is the agreed upon map. Don't be trying to fool me here. I don't think he has a map of Crown's Rock. All right. I I don't I don't see it either. So, what other things would he have? They don't really have... There's a, a bedroll, a cot, or a hammock. Which do we think he sleeps on? Well, that's more for travel anyway. That's what I was saying. I don't oh, think that's yeah. true. he's going to have that for... I don't think we, can as, we can assume that his house probably has a, a bed. I mean, the... Yeah. Sure, <clears throat> probably has normal furniture. In that's true. Yeah, basic yeah. furnishings, for sure. And to be fair... Harold has to do pretty well in order to have a house that's furnished. So he yeah. must be doing pretty well. You know, that's something I was wondering about. As a character starting with a house, do they, you know, have a huge chunk of their sovereigns missing? Or how is that going right. to work out? Because that's, that's a major possession to own and not have to pay for. Well, but that was, remember the conversations? That was a big part of if you bought in early and you bought a house, then you had... Um, a quantity of sovereigns in your pocket uh, when you rolled your character so that you had plenty available immediately with which to pay taxes. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I see this and, being... Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say those are the kind of two things that we need to think about in terms of playtesting through is... Um, right. And not playtesting immediately, but at some point is sure. how yeah. much do we have to furnish the house if you have a house or a home yeah and actually and uh what kind of stuff would we need for crafting once we start doing any crafting because right crafting for a revival you were going to need certain kinds of items and stuff like that just to for your craft and i guess that would come in some kind of package i don't know probably I'm, that's kind of what i'm thinking of instead yeah, of just having to go through and each person try to individually figure out, you know, okay, I'm going to need a pot, and a, I'm a baker, so I need an oven, and I need a, I need this kind of bakeware, and I need a knife, and I need, you know, hopefully the, those will come in packages of some sort, if we're going to be relying a, on... A discounted that. package, more importantly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I think I think that was the plan, was that you'd go to Marifar and there would be a the kitchen package or the, the study package or the map making package or mm -hmm. something like that. Which, which is fine, but now we have to translate that into the PMP, and that actually brings right, up a couple right. of questions that have been uh, tickling me for a bit here. Is Do we know, or Snipe, since he's there, it, will character creation money that is not spent during the course of creation get consumed, uh, you, you know, spent, use it or lose it, or will that start off as a remainder that you have when you enter the game? Uh, that changes a lot of things. Uh, my understanding is you start with that by default, and it's only if Omba is the narrator should you expect that you're immediately going to lose all of your possessions and be, <laughs> you know, penniless uh, well, with that, nothing to your name in a gutter in like the first five minutes. That's an Omba <laughs> thing, but you know that's well, not that's a, every that's DM. A, that's certainly a storyteller decision. But it's one of those <laughs> things where that's that's what we need to know is what's the standard for that, because if I knew. That typically speaking, no, the money is used or lose it. Yeah, no, the money no, is yours. Is what Snipe said. Right. Um, if you buy a house, if you work with your you know narrator ahead of time, and uh, this actually is a reference to another game, and I can't, I think it was a White Wolf game, uh, but one of the things you could do, you could essentially start with a shit ton of money, so that and lodgings of of a type of thing was actually part of the, of a perks advantage and disadvantage system. Um, but that's such a game changer when someone in your party actually has a home, a base of operations, and money, um, and, it, and it should be one of the things that gets addressed uh, just as, it, and I'm sure you've already thought of it, but it's one of the things that should be addressed at some point, you know, so that you have the flexibility of starting out a campaign, and again, it may be an inner city yeah. one where, you know, Diggs has a house, and he has you know, a solid income, so he uh, needs to be able to buy it, yeah, that starting I think it was that. Um, Battletech, actually, that, that did it that way, where it basically you could invest your points to start as a rich boy, invest your points to start as a total badass, or invest your points to start as a, an otherwise well-rounded uh, well <laughs> well uh, character. I gotta get one more of these. Yeah. 
well and, and, and grounded. I, I, yeah, I definitely know. It's not a, it's not a uh, unique one world. I mean, I know they've lots of games have tackled it, but that's just another point. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah if, Shadowrun, if, too. If someone, someone starts with a home, a manse, uh, whatever, uh, you know, yeah, there's probably some expectation of, a, of an <laughs> income with that. And yeah. uh, it's like, again, as Dave was saying for crafting, yeah, I, I'd expect that there be some kind of crafting pack. So, and I saw Snipe mention that, yeah, there will be some kind of structure for that, so I'll look forward to that in the future, because that will definitely streamline things and also just be kind of uh, a good towards you know, character building and world building. And, you know, I, I think one of the ways that it might work out best for um, at least the way Quick Create works, and it could be rolled into um, uh, Origin Matrix as well, is it's just a CP expense. It could be um, age minus 50 plus a certain value or whatever is uh, how much it costs to get a certain residence or the different residences are different uh, um, CP costs. So... Um, it could be it could be weighted in such a way that if you're starting with a 17 year old character, it's going to cost a lot more of your CP to actually have a house versus if you're an older character, it'll cost a little bit less just to have you know a tiny hovel. Um, so you know that's that's one way to approach it. Or alternatively, there is no weighting and it's just like you know 10 CP for a normal house and. You know, 100 CP for a manse and everything else in between is different values. So, you know, you could, as a well, as a, an epic character, you could start as like a 40-year-old Batman and have a rich house and still be a badass. <laughs> okay, but the other thing is, is that if you own a house and then you go adventuring, there's a cost. Who's going to pay your taxes? Right. Who's going to perform your maintenance? Who's going to handle all that while you're gone? Um, so... If, if you're going to do something like that where you're going to allow or give characters that kind of extra spendy option, then there needs to be a cost so that the character can be played with that, either that cost in mind or um, having to kind of have the bitter in the sweet. Right. Yeah, yeah, and so... And I think what I'd like to hear more of uh, next week for the second playtest run um, is uh, get a better feel of Tides and specifically. And I guess we don't have um, a map on par with a Tides End map on par. With no, Rock. that's a running request. Um, yeah. Mm. But um, what I'd like to get a feel for is because Ombla was saying that the characters should know each other, but. The first thing that happened once I realized that uh, we were going to, the, the once we um, kind of got a map and we were able to start purchasing houses for revival is I got with some of the Theory Forge guys and I was like, okay, so we're getting houses in the same tenement. <laughs> which which one are you choosing? <laughs> so that, you know, we're living in the same building. You know, it it you, you could be a eight year old character and still be living with your parents and it's not really your house right it's your parents house or your relatives house or you know this being um, um, not a Lovecraft story you inherited it from an uncle uh, <laughs> and I think uh, the way we're talking about these characters being expendable um, we might ex be expecting to uh, don't uh, not donate but um, you know pass down our, our homes and our equipment to relatives so you know right, you know, create, create your heir much like the character would have been yeah. for the game uh, well, to clarify they're expendable in that I'm not going to get too attached to it I still prefer he survive right <laughs> expendable in that it's Lovecraft they might be dying Quickly, we don't know. <laughs> that's that's it. Well, that's exactly that's it. right. I mean, there's yeah. there's a certain guarantee of death. Um, well, you don't necessarily die. You may go insane, but I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. And um, this, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That'd be interesting. Yeah. So cool. uh, part of what I'm saying is I, I'd, I'd like to hear next time uh, uh, get a better feel of tides and where 
uh, the characters that have been um, uh, created already where they uh, congregate what sections of town they might be hanging out in and uh, again for all we know they're in the same section of town or they're there's other ways that they, maybe some of them live in the same tenement or I mean who knows but that that's uh, we normally don't play that way or I normally have not played that way in other PNP games um, we just somehow were in the same area but almost never knew each other could be that you all knew somebody who just died or whatever and you were all arranged at the same table at the funeral or whatever well again what I, what I loved about when I was thinking about revival is we could start off with a, having an actual dinner party with our friends we invite our friends up to you know probably we live in the same tenement so we're like hey it's Saturday everybody come over for dinner I'm doing a yeah. card reading you bring, you know, or I'm doing a, uh, and a, uh, I'm gonna pull out my telescope and we'll look at the stars and uh, um, Phantom X will bring over his cards and do a reading, you know, uh, Nero's character will bring over some beer, you know, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm hoping to get more of a feel of that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And it should be a fun one because, yeah, we'll be launching. Uh, we've been tasked with figuring out our gear ahead of time. So while there might be a brief, you know, kind of cap on our covering of that, uh, a lot of it's really going to be able to launch right into the world and uh, the adventure of uh, life and Teleston. Yeah, I really like, uh, I really, I really like and appreciate being able to use the revival art assets to help right. create this immersive setting for our characters. Yeah. Whether it's Harold Baker or something in the playtest or whatever, I still, my mind goes to all those visuals that we had from Revival um, to help really create that setting and uh, flesh out the potential backstories for things. And, you know, I look at that sometimes and I think, well, hell, I mean, <laughs> is that even reasonable t today when we talk about uh, a play test or a pen and paper game, is it even reasonable to use that? But, you know, here we are creating Harold Baker, and here's his house, and it's awesome to just be able to go out there and grab that and say, that's where he lives, and yeah. that's what his neighborhood's like. And chances are, those are the people he sells to. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of world building you'd expect, anyways, out of a, out of a good, you know, game of any kind. Right. It? But it'd be as well. It's like, yeah, you'd have a pretty good sense of history for an area or or of, of major cities, things like that. So it's great that we have that in a sense we get to shortcut that uh, now. So definitely a positive. And it's yeah. always nice to have a visual. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, like anyone, I love being able to imagine things and picture them in my head, but it's nice to have kind of a visual style anchor uh, to kind of build yes. it out from. Hmm. Looks like I have the same two images uh, a couple of times over here. <laughs> Get rid of that one that's on top three. right now. Actually, I'm going to bring in a different one. Okay. What is going to be bringing in Crown's Rock here? I'm just going to kind of bring it to a more manageable size here and kind of zoom in on where the action's actually at here. So, he lives here in the uh, uh, Cambridge Toll, we, we determined. And I'm just gonna see. this bigger. Squish that down a little. Squish that down a little. Fit this here. All right. So, um, so we have Cambridge Toll here, and the house 
where Cambrick's Lane, um, that's running um, kind of east-west through the middle of the neighborhood, where that meets with uh, Willows Road, uh, which is the street on the right there, that's that's the intersection where he lives. It's the the house basically to the right of the L on Cambrick's Toll. Yep. Um, so you know that's a um, yeah, sixteen K by sixteen K is a wonderful resolution. It's a beautiful <laughs> map. I'm really glad that we uh, got access to it here. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you you build in the bricks. I don't know if he was drunk enough, though. <laughs> that was that was the part of that story. It's like if it was just cheap, you know, wine that doesn't really get you drunk. You'd be like, ah, oh, what are you doing? Just push out the wet bricks. But... <laughs> hey, that's why I give him the strong stuff. <laughs> oh, that story. So, um, there's there's definitely a lot of nice um, strategy to where he's living there, and I'll I'll pull out the map and kind of show that a little bit more later. But let's just kind of talk about the place itself here. So the two images at the bottom give you more of a feel of the. Um, the interior so it's um uh plaster with uh wooden beams going across it's not an evenly colored plaster and i believe that's done intentionally i believe that's the style of the area not that it's like old and moldy and crusty um you know it's got a fireplace on the first floor which um you know that's the fact that there's a fireplace there there's definitely a lot of um cooking stuff that could be set up um, even on the bottom floor knowing that you've got it able to vent out all the way to the top so um, you know that's pretty good and I'm sure there's other uh, places that kind of vent upward so you know there are actually cooking facilities here it's not just an empty house or whatever well yeah. this would have been modified too by you know if they bought the kitchen uh module and things like that so we can take some liberties with how it's yeah how it's actually right. gonna be laid out now so when you uh, look at that lower right picture yeah on the thing there's a door right on the right side and that's where that's where the kitchen could have gone the kitchen I see. module okay and right so, across from the front door which you're looking at right there is where the storefront would have been Gotcha. So the door in the lower right picture is the bottom door swinging open on the first floor diagram in the upper right. So the, the that's the uh, the south entrance, basically. That's the one that you're right. coming in from the main street. So uh, that means the fireplace is just to your right when you enter. And the space that would have the kitchen is just to the left when you enter. The kitchen space itself is a pretty reasonable size. It looks like about um, a little less than or about close to 50% of the space of the floor itself, um, you know, the main room, uh, staircase included. And I see, you know, there's this little box in here on the uh, on the first floor. What do we suppose that is? Is that that uh, is the storefront area? That's the storefront. Okay. Yes. Cool. So that's only the only the five uh, storefront homes have that box. Gotcha. So that's a very very special thing. It is zoned for proper business and whatnot, and is not already owned by an NPC at the start of revival so so that's 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 really uh scarce then if there's only five uh possible stores yep. that you could have had and five uh, stores uh, per server player, yeah player 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 stores, yes per server that's that's so minimal were there also out outdoor uh market booths that you could set up yeah, for you could okay. go over to the market neighborhood and you could rent yeah, okay, so you system. weren't completely limited if you didn't want to have one of these houses. In this house, it was... Yeah, this, it, was, this was a series, a player who wanted to make a serious investment in <clears> having <throat> a business home yeah. uh, storefront right off the bat. And and as uh, Diggs mentioned and, and Paul mentioned, yeah, the, it, the NPCs had many more, but it would have been involved in the process in you trying to you know take that from them. Mm -hmm. 
And you could also sell out of your house even without the storefront, but you wouldn't get the built-in advertising that having a storefront home like this would provide. It, it's all I automatic. See. Well, I mean, so that's the value you get for spot. a $200 house, basically. Yep. That's, you know, it's like 197 I think, on the website. Yep. So that's, yeah. <laughs> that's some real cash. So, um... You got the storefront. Um, guessing that's like a little broom closet or something in the upper right. Then go up to the second floor. Um, you've got an extension. Uh, the The area that's above the kitchen, it's covering kind of half the kitchen and kind of half. Actually, no. I take that back. If you look at it, the um, the second floor is actually wider than the first floor. So the kitchen spot is in the same place or the, the area where it, right. it lines it's up with the bottom floor. But, yeah, the second floor itself just extends out further. Right. So Harold's got a good gig here with the main, the big fireplace on the main level, the storefront on the main level, and the potential for a kitchen module all on the same level and all right there in terms of customers walking in the door. That's a good setup, because up on the second story, he could have anything else in that second uh, customizable room, plus an extra bedroom, and he's got a third floor. Mm -hmm. a great setup. During the winter, I have a feeling that a bunch of people would conspire to come through, take a long time, talk with them for a while, make that line get really long so while they're in there they're getting free heat off of the um off of the fireplace and then they insist to eat while they're in there so you know people spend like an hour to get out of the cold just you know buying one or two buns and eating them there it seems like the sort of thing though maybe come with those neighborhoods so, uh, and then the third floor, it doesn't have a kitchen. It's just a very small, I'm guessing that's like, you know, private Sleepy. bedroom. Yeah. You know, any. That's any... how I imagine most, uh, that's how I would have imagined that space used. Uh, you know, kitchen and business on the first floor. Second floor pretty much becomes your entertaining area for people you know, because, you know, you don't have your first floor for that, which means your third floor is your, you know, your chambers. Yeah, that makes sense. So the total number of rooms, I would say you've got two kind of main lobby type rooms. You've got two kitchen spaces and a, uh, you know, your, your own personal bedroom. And I would imagine the other, like you said, your entertainment room, your study, uh, additional storage, whatever you're using it for. Right. It's a lot of space in uh, in a crowded little place like Crown's Rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a great setup. He's right there on the intersection of, you know, it's it's a block from Newton Street. He's right on the corner of two streets. Yeah. I mean, he's just really in a great spot there for being able to tap. Yeah. Um, neighborhoods. You know, let me actually kind of pull that out a little bit more. So you folks can see just what a good deal it is. So we see um, that's the the South Farms here, which is the farms closest to the South Woods. So you know, there's not just whatever gets farmed, but I'm sure a lot of foraging and wood stuff comes from there. So you know, berries and small game like rabbits and stuff I'm sure are plentiful in those areas or whatever sort of small game there is around there uh, so access to that is a good thing anybody coming from uh, Newall that doesn't want to go to Crowns Road or really anybody coming from the south that doesn't want to go on Crowns Road Crowns Road is a big thick avenue which I would imagine is where you're going to see a lot more horses and carts and horse poop and pickpockets and all, all the fun stuff that comes with the main avenue. So, um, people that would want to avoid that but want to make their way north would most likely go down Newton Street until they get to Willow Row and take that north to wherever they're going to go. 
uh, Cambrick's Toll, of course, you know, it's it's towards the south, so anybody who's doing any business around the south, going across the south area, you kind of get close to that area. But I would say it's mostly um, uh, Newton, Rusted Quarter, Willows, people in the southern parts of those areas that are trying to make their way north. They'd go down to Newton Street, make their way up, or... Uh, I'm, well, yeah, even Crowns Willows. You know, I probably yep. would have walked down there from my house in Crowns Willows. Yeah. We're just talking a couple blocks. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just, just thinking of all the different, all the ways that people would find their way to that intersection. And the overall value of it is just enormous. You yeah. can get a lot of business. And, you know, again, if somebody is... Maybe you run an inn or a tavern or something like that somewhere in this area and you want to be able to secure, um, you know, a, a regular like 50 rolls a day or something. Well, probably pretty easy to find this place because it's one of the, uh, the known um, shop houses. So it's definitely, you know, there's a lot of business opportunities beyond just the people coming by, you know, on the on the daily basis. Well, slaughterhouse nearby and fishmonger nearby. Yeah. There's lots of reasons to be around there, so Yeah. Yep. I mean even just other uh you know, food businesses that might you know make completed meals would be visiting there. I mean that's perfect for them, right? They get their fresh cuts oh, yeah. of meat, they get their bread for their buns and they you know, their sandwiches, they go off back to their taverns and prepare their meals for the night. Yeah. Yeah, but so, uh, oh, yeah, and so scroll down, scroll down so we can see the farms and then make it our way down to the docks because that's really one of the reasons to, to Oh, good okay. be down. Let me just uh, move this like that. Move this here. And we'll that actually adjust the size here a little bit. There we go. Oh, I guess I don't have the uh, the docks in this uh, cropped image here. Oh, okay. Well, it's just below the Southgate Farms, basically. Yeah. So. Yeah, just off the image. Yep, just down in that area. Yep. So you would basically take Crown Road, uh, south outside, past Southgate Farm. It doesn't really have a clearly defined road that takes you to the docks, but I'm sure there is one. Yeah. yeah, some kind of path or something. Yeah, because, you know, you don't just want to be transporting all sorts of goods from ships and such over rugged forest terrain. That doesn't sound yep. fun or economical for any sort of import-export business. Or tourism or anything else. That really just seems like an abysmal way to start. So, um, that might be... Um, that was uh, a Hohen port in the south, isn't it? Uh, no. Yes. Yeah? No. Uh, wait, no. No, I thought Hohen was south, uh, north, yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I, I remember that was the one that had the uh, reputation for being uh, kind of shady, if I'm not mistaken. That's so, the one up north at Northgate Farms. Yeah, so the one in the south, you would imagine it's just it's just a discrepancy in the map. There's totally some sort of big, thick-ass road or whatever that gets in between. Yeah, there's just saying it's covered by trees. Yeah, it's just tree covered. Well, you know, that that's on the cartographer. Cameron's Toll's good location for that. I mean, yeah. he's got all that, all that stuff coming off the farms, getting trucked to the main part of town in the markets, and he'd be like, you... I'll take that. Yep. Don't yep. even have to get to market, and you got a sale here. Yep. Yep. Okie dokie. Yep. So, what do we need? What do we want to do for for next time? 
What are what are what kind well, of setup? I think we've got. I, th I think we should kind of push forward with figuring out. You know, maybe throwing him into our scenario and seeing kind of how we think he would uh, kind of tackle that. Because at this point, yeah. we've got his home, his life well established. I mean, you know, for the most part, gear and stats. Uh, yeah. I think he's ready to go. Get involved in events that are outside his comfort zone. Yep. If only we had some kind of dice rolling app that we could have. <laughs> <laughs> I in mean, two weeks, in two weeks' time. Um, but uh, no, that's my next thing. Is what, <laughs> what? What are the die rolls that we're using? I'm pretty sure it's all D10. D10. Okay, I think that was. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah. Run off of just D10s, but. <clears throat> And it's two D tens. Is that what we're rolling against? Or yeah, like things? one, one and two, depending on what the the type of the roll is and what you're doing or whatever. Um, I would imagine you don't need to roll, you know, four D ten for a great sword attack or whatever. <laughs> okay. Um. All right, and then I'm trying to think of what else we would need. Anything? Um, I think it'll be just seeing where the uh, character creator is at with uh, gear between now and the next session, and I'll uh, I'll fill in the uh, character sheet and export it so we can you know at least have that saved. Yeah, but, yeah, we're we're good to go for gear for the most part. I think we can wing that. We've got a story to see what the story is. Um, but before that, we'll have a, a preliminary. I mean, we'll already have a story coming from. Umbra. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know. It happen I, next next Sunday. We should already yeah. be in story. Mode. Yeah, I'm excited to see the uh, the first uh, play session um, and how that goes. It should be pretty fun. Yep. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hope so. Okie doke. That's about going to wrap us up. What time is it? Well, we've got eight minutes, technically. Zero's going to have to turn into a pumpkin. Yeah. yeah unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Another I mean, busy uh, weekend for me. It always is. I mean, I guess the uh, the power, I just kind of threw everything off. We've, we've actually been going for uh, uh, what, an hour and 20 minutes here, so. Yeah. yeah. I'm always happy to go longer. Except today, where I'm not allowed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, that's right. fine. We uh, we covered a lot here today, so yeah, I'm looking forward to um, getting to it. And uh, between now and two weeks from now, I'll probably write up some uh, campaign and scenario related stuff, and we'll uh, we'll see how things go. Are you gonna cover? What's the plan for? I'm talking to the devs actually. What's the plan for the fireside on Tuesday? Are we talking more tides in? Or I wonder what the deal is there before we. No, well, yeah, because we'll we'll have two firesides. No, we'll have one fireside before we get to the next play session. Uh, we'll have a fireside. Yeah, this Tuesday, and then play session this coming Sunday. Yeah. So I don't know if uh, the plan for Tuesday is supposed to be more tides in information. What, what do we need? I'm sure, for the, I'm sure to we get could that? ask them. Yeah, I don't, what, do, what do we need for that play session to get going? What, what do you guys feel like you need for that that play session to start? Um, probably lore basic. I mean, we need a, yeah, we a narrative. Need yeah, like, we've got the basis of it with the, with the uh, invite, um, uh, kind of a s teaser intro to it. But yeah, we'll need to actually get a setting. Uh, you know, kind of current event uh, of what's going on. Uh, I'd like to know, maybe uh, again, for, uh, I, I th it was mentioned, I believe, in the uh, beginning, but uh, time of year and uh, uh, local conditions. Uh, we'll see. I'll have questions for them by Tuesday. But uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you need. Know, I'm going to do his, his storyteller bit about it. Yeah. Yeah. But I was, I was just wondering if uh, you and Cole felt like you had well, enough to be ready by Sunday? You could just wait until Sunday? Or are you looking for 
certain stuff on Tuesday. Oh, I, I'll have questions that, that, again, they're questions that I've already asked in the PNP channel and uh, in the, uh, 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 where the playtest is happening, um, or questions from the playtest, I should say, and I'll have more that I want to talk to them about on, or that I'm saving for the Fireside, or maybe I'll iterate from the uh, PNP channel. That Actually, that's probably what I'll do, is I'll just have them tackle those questions then so that everyone gets the answers uh, uh, in the fireside. Uh, for the most part, I mean, I know my character, I know most of the gear he's going to need, uh, and I know his kind of motivation, so really it's going to just depend on getting into the world and start doing the storytelling bit. Uh, but yeah. again, I do have some kind of questions that will be mostly gear-related because it's kind of still putting together what I think his kit would be uh, for the finer details of things. Um, and also ping some cultural questions on him because he does have uh, cultural etiquette again specifically so he just doesn't outright offend people when he's cross-selling uh, <laughs> questions that will uh, be related to that as well so maybe a little bit more real insight mm -hmm. okay yeah I think I'm interested to see if this is going to be a, if this party is going to be traveling if it's going to be uh, foot by horse or by caravan and what that's going to mean in terms of Right. getting your gear set up for foot travel, horse travel, or um, caravan travel, because I'm used to traveling in uh, by foot in most PNPs, but um, yeah. for Revival, we talked a lot about caravan travel, and I don't even know if you guys are going to be traveling at all. Yeah, we don't, we don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't know enough yet. Yeah. I did go buy a horse, because... When I added up the weight of all the things that I bought, it seemed reasonable that my character would not be able to carry that. It was 56 pounds. Hmm. And, yeah. you know, she doesn't have, she's like too brawn. <laughs> yeah. She just doesn't have the strength to I around 56 pounds I certainly all the time. hope that horse, and that's more of a physique thing, I think. I certainly hope that horse is um, uh, water ready, because I'm pretty sure you folks are going on a boat at some point. Yeah, Fine could now. be. I don't. I don't know. But I, I mean, I horse was feeling. easily affordable. Or rather, horse versus horse, uh, cart and two horses. Um, you know, and I kind of looked at it. I thought, well, you know, she goes off and she gathers herbs a, a lot on her own. So a horse would be handy for having for, for carrying all that stuff. I don't know. Just like so, a small like pole wagon sort of thing seems like it would work for that too. Yeah. A wagon or a mule. But I did not see a mule in the list. I probably would have bought a mule if it had been there. Yeah. I think you probably would trade that in for a mule. But it, again, it depends on whether, because a mule might be more easy to take care of. I don't know. I don't know if it's easy to take care of. They're a little of. bit more uh, temperamental. Than just They're a little bit more docile by nature. But I, I picked up a horse, too, for the same reasons. I mean, well, one, he's got to be able to travel and you know, yeah. and he's uh, because he's traveling a fair bit. I imagine maybe not often, but uh, enough to you know, warrant. It. Um, and again, some things are just appearances. He has to, you know, just like any business thing. It's just he's got to maintain a certain level of appearance. So, uh, but again, a lot of the questions are just getting into detail work at this point. You know, fine tuning some character stuff, uh, some world building questions for. Uh, so I don't go in. So I can go in and represent the character as he should, you know, um, and, uh, rest to find out Sunday. Yeah, Sounds I good. mean, we, that's not, not enough info to really go much further. Yep. Here, I've been yeah. planning for travel, but maybe we're not traveling, I don't know. Yeah. First night, everyone smashed the tavern. I know. <laughs> and everybody yep. loses their horses in a bet made by one of the people. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, who, who has seen Kong? Has anybody seen Kong? No, next no. weekend. Crap. Next weekend. It looks good, though. Cool. All right, well, all right, cool. uh, I think we'll be wrapping it up there. Thank you all very much. Definitely tune in on Tuesday for the Fireside and next weekend over on the DOP channel for the um hopefully the first actual gameplay session of the uh the pnp uh should be pretty fun should be interesting see uh see how things go see how Ombwa's uh style plays out as a uh, uh a narrating lore master person and 
all the uh, all the shenanigans that uh, Snipe ends up leading them into. <laughs> all right. Till then, we'll see you folks later. Bye bye. Have a good one. <laughs>